Today we're celebrating International Land Snail Day. So let me first and foremost start by saying that Richmond is located on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. So we are guests on this territory of indigenous peoples. And for this, we are very grateful. We're also very grateful to the Richmond Nature Park. Yay, thank you so much, Angela. And I'm recording this and I will put the links later. Uh, so don't worry if you miss something. And if you had tons of fun and you would like to draw uh, along in a different time, you can also do that. So if you want me to slow down, or if you need to tell me something, uh, please use the chat, uh, but just don't use it to chit chat. Just let me know if I need to slow down or if you want me to repeat something. Um, and with that being said, let's go and draw a slug. So I have um, an eraser, I have a sharpener, and then I have a blue pencil, any blue would do. It's like you will see, uh, if you've been uh, coming here and drawing with me, you know that this is a magic pencil because whatever you draw with it, suddenly magically you don't see it anymore once you use a graphite pencil. So we are gonna do a lot of circles. So I want you to make sure that you have enough room in your page. Our banana slug is not gonna be, is not gonna fit if you have your page like this. So I suggest that you put the page in this um, format, it's called landscape. So the long, you see how long the page is. Uh, and also I recommend that we start drawing the circles, um, the head around here. So you have room for a very long tail. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my non-photo blue pencil, any blue would do, but the first thing, first, 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 first thing is to start with the head. And I'm just going to draw a circle. And seriously, it's just a circle. And because I'm not very good at circles, I need to go very slowly. Actually, I might start a little bit lower on the page. Yeah, like here. And take your time because circles are very hard. And once you get the idea, you can go a little bit. I'm going to draw a little bit harder than I would recommend you, just so you can see it well on the screen, okay? So this is my circle for the head. And I am going to do another circle, but in this case, it's a circle that I have stretched out. So it's an oval. And this one is going to overlap a little bit this circle. And it's going to start here. And it's going to be, hmm, I think this would be a good oval. And as you can see, it doesn't have sharp edges. It's a circle that I have just like stretched, totally stretched out. Oh, I see that more people are joining. That's awesome. Well, we just started. So I'll repeat what we've done so you can catch up. So we started with a circle and we took our time because circles sometimes are hard. And then we used again, the same blue pencil to draw an oval. That is just a circle that we, uh, we stretch like chewing them. And they overlap like x-rays, but we are not gonna see that. I promise you, I guarantee you that we will not see any of these lines later. More things, well, this doesn't look like a slug. I know, I, you're absolutely right. This is our foot, our, our, our blueprint. Um, what we're gonna do now is an even, even larger oval. And it's gonna start, uh, I think it's gonna start around here. And now is your choice to decide how long your slug is going to be. Mine is going to end here, but you can decide how long your slug is going to be. Because some slugs are very tiny and some slugs are very long, like the banana slug. Okay. 
And as you notice, I have made the lower part of this oval a little bit flat because she's walking on a surface. So that is our blueprint. So I'll go through that uh, again. So we're all on the same page. We started with a circle on this part on the left side of your page. And then I did an oval that overlaps that circle. And then the as long as you wish oval that starts around here and extends as long as you wish. My banana slug is going to be that long. And because it's walking on a surface, I just made a blue line underneath. And banana slugs and slugs are in general are super cool animals. I'm going to write down here a word that is very interesting. So they are gastropods. And when I read that word, I was like, what? What does that mean? And that literally means uh, that, that uh, uh, they, they walk with their guts. So all the, um, all the, the, the guts, the intestine, all the organs are inside the foot. So imagine if you, this is your foot. Imagine if this is your foot with your fingers. Imagine if that was you, that was your food, and you had your stomach, your lungs, your heart, all there in a food. And you were just like burk, 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 walking around. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, that's, that's what these animals are. And they're also mollusks. So they're cousins with, um, they're cousins with the clams, with the octopus. And it's just, yeah, they're, they're, they're cousins they're close enough <laughs> so they're very interesting creatures let's let's draw them shall we i think i'm ready to go with my graphite pencil because guess what um like we're going to start with the head and they have something that if you were here in the previous uh, lesson you may have uh, seen this word tentacle and i did not know seriously that snails and slugs have tentacles I had no idea. And they have four. Two, they're called the upper tentacles. And two, they're called the lower and tinier tentacles. And the upper tentacles, if you were before here, you are a master of tentacles. So we're going to start making a tiny circle. That's going to be one of our eyes. And I'm going to leave a tiny opening there. Is it called guts? I think so. Thanks for the question. I think so. All the guts uh, is the intestines, um, um, the liver, the lung. And I say lung because they have only one. Yeah, those are all the guts. So thank you for that question. So um, the eye, this is the eye and I'm leaving a tiny gap there. And all I'm gonna do is to make a curvy line from the eye, a little bit thicker when it inserts into the head. And this is our, um, one of our tentacles. I made it a little bit short. So let me correct myself. Maybe it should be a little bit longer. So that's where my friend, the eraser was right here. Thank you, eraser. And then the other eye, I'm gonna put him here. And you can make this line like super wiggly. I'm going to make mine like this. And then it's a little bit thicker. There we go. So this so far looks like a snail to me. Like what? They look the same, don't they? Snails and, and, um, snails and, and slugs, they look the same, but they're not the same. They're very different. Uh, let's do the lower tentacles, and they're tinier versions of those. So I'm going to make one here, one tiny tentacle here, uh, a little bit thicker where it joins. There we go. That's one of my tentacles. And then one here, 
because the head is looking that way. My other tentacle might end here. So I am making my other tentacle somewhere like there. And you can see suddenly when we are drawing with the graphite, I cannot see the blue anymore. I can only see this very, very interesting graphite. So that's why I call the blue pencil like this magical, magical uh, pencil. I haven't erased it, it's still there, but somehow I don't see it. So it's a good way to start a drawing. Uh, so let's finish the space here. I'm just uh, gonna make some uh, lines between these tentacles. Actually, I made that line a little bit. Let me put that face into there. And then a very, um, uh, something that we did on the snail, I'm just gonna make a W that is very curvy. So I'm just gonna make this shape on the mouth right here. It's a W, you know, like the letter W, but it's very round, it's very round. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna use my non-photo blue first to make sure that when I use the graphite, there we go. So I'm gonna use my graphite now and it's this very, very curvy W letter. Oh, hello. Oh, you're so nice. Oh, I actually made a mistake. I need to link it here to the other side of the mouth, sorry. Because the tentacle comes from there, it's in front. There we go. Oh, my friend, this, uh, today I'm using the eraser a lot. Thank you, eraser. If you see that your eraser is as dirty as mine, and instead of erasing, is adding more dust and, and, and dirt, you can erase the eraser. And when you erase the eraser, suddenly you have a much cleaner edge. Um, because, yeah, my eraser is very dirty. There we go. So we have our tentacles upper tentacles with the eyes. And I think this lug is looking at me. So I'm going to draw at you. And at you and me. It's looking at both of us. Those are the two eyes. And that's where they're located. And they move. These are tentacles that move. So I'm adding these lines to all the tentacles because these tentacles move, 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 move. There is no skeleton inside the slug. Uh, it's very, very interesting. They don't have a skeleton. They are, actually that has a name, it's called invertebrate, vertebrate. And literally what this means is that it does not have, does that word sound familiar? Vertebrae. They don't have a, a spine. They don't have any bones inside. So that's why they're very flexible, very flexible. They can uh, get through very tiny holes in the garden and eat all the berries. <laughs> so there we go, that's our face. Another structure that the slugs have, and this is why we did our second oval, is called the mantle. And I'm gonna write it here before I draw it. And mantle, I don't know for you, but for me, that word reminds me of um, some sort of a blanket. Uh, because maybe, I don't know, it reminds me of the word manta in Spanish. That means uh, blanket. So that I always thought, oh, mantle, it reminds me of a blanket. And that's how it feels a little bit. So from the head, from the head, there is this structure. I always thought that it looked like if the slug was cold and she had covered herself in this very beautiful blanket. And it comes, it, it will end, I think we can end it here. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing until there. Look how I made a tiny hunch there, a tiny, tiny, tiny um, mountain there. And I stopped here. And now I want you to draw along with me a line that is like this. And you're going to ask why, 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 why? You'll see it in a minute. You see what we did? A line 
that is a little bit curvy. And now we're going to make a round edge. And we're going to end there. And if you need to, 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 to move your page, move it. I'm just going to do it like this so you can see it. And I'm going to use my eraser uh, to make sure I make it curvier. There we go. There is no rule. You can rotate your paper as needed. It doesn't need to stick in one place. So suddenly our slug has a beautiful, beautiful blanket on top of her. It's called a mantle. And there is a structure here that I'm gonna draw that is very much like an oval with another line here. And that is a hole. And you might have seen that hole and it's very impressive because you can see through it. <laughs> you can see the forest behind it. And that hole, I'm gonna uh, make maybe an arrow and call it here, Neumos Tome. And what this really literally mean is a hole for breathing. And that's where the air goes through and that's how she breathes. And this reminds me so much, so much to this animal. To whales, they have a hole and that's how they breathe because they're mammals. But it's a different hole here. This, this leg is not a mammal. But yeah, this is, this is my very simplified version of a, a, a whale, which I don't think whales look like that, but there we go. So that's called the pneumo stone, a hole for breathing and air goes in and out and they can close it. So if you see a slug with no hole, that means that she has close it. Do fish or sharks have those? No, uh, fish and sharks, they have gills. So they're a different um, mammals, like mammals like whales or us, we have lungs and fish have gills? That's a very good question. Thank you so much for asking that. And, oh, what was I saying? Yes, if you see a slug that has no, no, no new more stone, it's because she has it, but she has closed it because it might be maybe too, too hot and too dry. And that's something that um, slugs like humidity. I'm gonna put here, they love, humidity, rain, cool, dark, uh, wet areas where they can just, um, because they're all water, so they need to keep all that water and that's why they close it. So it doesn't evaporate, so it doesn't, yeah. One thing I didn't mention about the tentacles is that uh, these ones are for vision, right? The upper tentacles, those are for vision, that's how they see. But the lower ones, the lower ones are for feeling and, and touching. And, and, and touching. They can go around and see, oh, this leaf looks very yummy. Oh, this leaf doesn't look yummy. So that's, that's the mission of those tentacles. So let's continue, let's continue. This is getting very, very interesting. Now we have our body and guess what? Um, this is gonna leave a lot of slime. So leave a little bit of room here under. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of a round line here. And maybe the bottom, yeah, absolutely. Maybe the bottom is a little bit flat. But inside, there's another line that is going to be very curvy, very curvy. And you can draw these as many wavy lines as you wish. As you notice, I did much bigger, much bigger uh, wavy lines in the front and tinier at the, at the very, very bottom. And it really depends how, how long your snail, your uh, slug is. But remember to be very, very generous with your curvy lines because this is a, a, an organism. This is not a rock. 
So you can make curvy lines anywhere you want. So that's my, uh, my slug. I'm gonna make sure that I add the surface. And as I said, there's a lot of slime. So to draw the slime, I'm just gonna draw. That's, that's the slime. She's leaving a lot of slime behind. So much so that I'm gonna drop some slime here and here. And she's going in that direction. And she's leaving all this line behind. And one thing I really, really like about slime is that it has two or three functions. The first one, as you can imagine, um, for protection, if you are covering slime, ugh, who's gonna eat you? It might be also harder to for a raccoon to grab a, a, um, a slug because it escapes. So yeah, for protection, but also it helps travel. It's like gliding on ice. She, it's like if she went going on, on skates. But also, also one thing I read that was very cool is that it is how she takes showers. So all this lime cleans her surface. And yeah, all the maybe rocks, a little bit of sand, that is left behind. So she's always very shiny and very clean. Yeah, our slug is very clean. And she has a mouth here. And if you came to the previous session, the mouth, you'll know that it's called a radula. And what that means is that inside they have a tongue that when they stick it out, it's covered in teeth. And when I read that, I was just shocked. Like, I don't want to be bitten by a slug because it can have up to 14,000 teeth. Oh my goodness, can you imagine that? So that is the mouth. I'm going to put here in parentheses, mouth right there. Now she has her tongue inside, but if she sticks it out, that's what we would see, a lot of teeth. And that is very cool <laughs> because she loves eating. Our slug loves eating. What does she eat? I'm going to put it here. She eats fungi. And fungi is a very, very interesting word for mushrooms. She loves eating mushrooms. And she also likes to eat leaves. And if you've seen all the fallen leaves, that's what she loves eating. And also, 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 she eats poop. I'm gonna make a poop here. Poop by animals, I know. So she eats all these things. So that's why they're so good at recycling because who else is gonna eat that? Isn't that amazing? And when she eats these things, she transforms them into rich soil so more plants can grow. So they're so important, so important, such a tiny, tiny animal and so important. It's, it's really interesting. I really love the, uh, learning, learning about, about slugs. So uh, it's a time maybe to introduce you to two friends that I found today. Um, can the slugs eat poisonous fungi? That is such a good question. Wow, I hadn't thought about it. I will have to read about it. I don't know, but I would really like to know because that's a very... <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. I, I will have to read about that for sure. I'm going to introduce you to two friends that I found today. And let's see, I have a piece of paper here. And I'm going to introduce you to two friends. I named them Doris and Boris. Hello. Who are you? Are you Boris or Doris? Hello. Hello, beautiful. And I found them this morning and I was so happy because in time for our class. Hello, Doris and hello, Boris. 
So these are two beautiful slags. Now I'm all covered in slime. Hello. Oh, and they left us a little bit of poop as well. So I'm going to put them here so you can see them. So Boris and Doris are two beautiful slugs that I don't know if you can see, but those are the upper tentacles. And let's see if you can see the lower tentacles. Hello. Yeah, oh my goodness, you're coming here. Thank you. Look how oh all the slime. Oh my goodness, so slimy. And look at the mantle. And I can see the new more stone. I can see it there. Oh, thank you so much for coming out while we are just about to start adding color. Thank you very much. Can you go back into the paper, please? Yes, stay there. And I promise I will keep them hydrated and it will not be, uh, they will not be there for long. Uh, I don't know what they are going to do, but I just would like to show them to you because they are the real deal, the real slugs. And I'm going to return them later um, after we are done. Uh, and you can see all the shiny uh, slime uh, that they're leaving behind. And I have to also want to make sure they feel safe. So I'm going to add a little bit of leaves here. So they can hide if they need to. And if they go away too far, I will return them to the Tupperware and later to the garden. So because we have them here, we can see the color that they are. And they have all this texture. And I know that there's some, um, thank you, some, uh, some slugs that have like patches of dark color. So I'm gonna add that because I would like my slug to be like a banana slug with all these, like almost like a Dalmatian. You're gonna crawl around the paper? Okay, I'll let you do that. That's okay. We can have some, well, you know what I can do? I can put a this and say, this is slime. Although I don't know how that's gonna work when we add color. I don't know how that's gonna work. Can you climb here, please? Thank you. I'll put you here. Thank you very much for your help. Ooh. <laughs> so do you see that path? That's very amazing. Oh, well. So um, I'm going to start adding some color because I noticed that they're mostly brownish. They're mostly, I wanted to show you this. Um, I have some photos here of banana slugs. Uh, this one here is very green, uh, but also this one is very yellow. And this one is the one I want to do. This is one that is green on the mantle or on the head, but also is green on the uh, body, but it has all these dark spots. Um, and thank you for the photographers for, for these amazing photos. So I am going to do that one. I'm going to do green with, uh, dark, um, with dark spots. So I'm going to start just, uh, it's a very, very soft green. So I'm going to start very light with green. Are they friends? And what type of slugs are they? These are just regular garden slugs. They're very, yeah, I think they're friends because I found them together. Um, I'm sure their parents call them differently, but I named them Doris and Boris. And yeah, I will make sure that I keep them hydrated. I have a little bottle of, of spray of water. Um, so after we're done with this, um, yeah, I have this, this spray. So I can do this, uh, the drawing. There we go. There you go. So you are like all humid as we, um, because I, I, I don't want them to, to suffer. Um, so if you find a slug that is crawling, you can bring her to a dark, humid part of the garden so they are happy i don't keep this inside at all i just brought them in because i thought it would be cool to show you how a slug actually looks like and how tiny tiny they are no these are not poisonous but thank you for asking uh yeah no these are not poisonous so i'm just adding some color and one is escaping so i'm just gonna 
put them back into their home with their friend, our, our friends now. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've been very, very friendly and I appreciate that you came. Thank you for being such good models. You can stay there with all your leaves. And after the class, I will bring you back into the garden. Okay. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Okay. And that's uh, slug poop. There I go. That's super rich soil. So I will also put that into the garden. All my hands, I have here a napkin. But if you have ever grabbed um, uh, a slug, you will notice that it doesn't matter how much soap you use, you still have a lot of stuff in your hands. So, okay, let's go back to drawing, shall we? We had a very special visitor, and guess what? I can see it here, all the path. <laughs> this is the path. That This line was left behind by Boris or Doris, I have no idea who was who. So a lot of people, and you're making some, some questions, very interesting questions, thank you for that, think that snails and slugs are the same. And it's just that the slug doesn't have a home, but they're different. They're, they're, they're totally, totally different animals. They're cousins, they're related, but it's not like the snail got tired of their of her house and said oh i'm just gonna go for a walk no they never had a shell never 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 and what they do for protection when they get scared is they get very tiny they contract and they go deep into the soil and as you see i'm using now i'm, I'm switching to colors and i know i would like mine to be a very green uh, light green so I'm mixing and this is where this this slug was so now it it uh, it does a, a weird effect on the on the drawing so I'm just adding yellow on top of the green because the one in particular that I am uh, for the purpose of these is the Pacific banana slug let's see so that shell is a snail shell yeah so snail by definition all snails have a shell by definition and then the slug does not have a, uh, uh, a shell they have this i when i first saw them a slug i never noticed this mantle i thought it was just a tube like a snaky thing, but I never noticed the mantle until I saw one up close. And I was like, oh, interesting. Hmm, I never noticed that. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow on top. And one thing, it doesn't matter what color you're coloring yours, but I would like to share some tricks. Like for example, under the mantle, just make sure it's a little bit darker also right underneath. And there's also one thing that we can add in color. So there's a part of this lug that I really, really like, and I would like to add it with green. If your slug is red, you can use the red. And is, is these squares that are following the line that we drew. And I like to do this with color because sometimes I like to get out of one thing called comfort zone. I'm like, I can only draw with graphite. No, you can also draw with color pencil. So all these squares, they have a name and you cannot believe the name. That is called a skirt. So there you go, slugs have something here that is called a skirt. And it's like that edge at the very, very bottom. And it's very interesting. I, I didn't I didn't know uh, I didn't know that slugs had skirts. So I'm gonna add also a little bit of brown here. 
to add a little bit of shadow and a little bit of shadow. And I also want to do these spots. And I know in the image it's black. So I am going to use black, but very, very lightly because I don't want to go too dark too soon. Because I like using colors very lightly at first. And then a little bit darker. It's easier to add color than to remove it with color pencil. Even if your color pencils are um, colorable, uh, color erasable, it, it, it's sometimes better to, to start a little bit lighter. So I am going to start now adding more shadow. So the things that are, um, imagine that the light is coming from here. So things that are on this part are a little bit darker. So all these underneath might be a little bit darker, not only because it's under the mantle, but also because the head is kind of making a shadow there. Also, this tentacle here, I'm going to darken that a little bit so it stands out. Uh, this little mouth, it looks like the muzzle of a dog. It's very interesting. And then this a little bit here, just a little bit. As you notice, I'm leaving a little bit of a um, lighter area and then a darker area. Don't draw the eyes on the lower tentacles. They only have eyes on the top ones. There we go. And then the mouth a little bit darker. That's where the radula is. And when she's hungry, she is gonna let that uh, tongue with teeth go out. And then because that is a hole, uh, I, I, have, um, I think I have a trick because Guess what? This uh, slug is in hmm, is in a park, and there are a lot of trees, right? So maybe I'll add some green in the background. So I'm going to use that same color here. <laughs> so in a way, I can see through. And maybe this is a tree. There we go. And maybe there's more trees here. Yeah, she is outside for sure. Like mine are going to, and they're not mine. I invited them. They're my guests and I'll return them. But yeah, they'll go back to the garden so they can be happy. Probably their friends are wor worried. Like, where are they? So I will make sure I return them. But also something very important is the soil. So I'm going to use brown to add a little bit of color here. And because the slime is transparent, which means that uh, you can see through, I'm going to use the same color I'm using for the soil. But in this case, I'm going to press very lightly. And not everywhere, just here and there a little bit. And now it creates this effect that we can still see through a little bit. <clears throat> and that's the slime. I'm going to make an arrow so you can see that. That's the slime. And there's some lines that got a little bit lost when I added color. So I'm going to go through. And I didn't lie to you. Do you see the blue? I cannot see it. It's definitely magic. And one thing I want to do with the mantle is add a little bit more of uh, color here. Yeah. And also one thing I want to add a little bit of shadow here because I know that that will create a little bit more volume. That's how we create um, things with volume by creating areas of light, by creating areas of, of shadow. And that's what really, that's why drawings look so 3D, but they're just flat. They're on a piece of paper. It's just all these tricks that we use that makes us think that the slug is gonna come out of the page. Isn't that amazing? So 
So I'm just going to add a little bit now more of black. And they're not regular spots. Uh, by regular, I mean they're not perfect, perfect circles. They're very irregular. And I'm making some up here. And I bet these helps with camouflage. So they can, by having the same colors of the leaves and the mushrooms, they kind of, yeah, they kind of disappear. It wasn't easy to find the slugs I brought today. They were hidden. Because guess what? Guess who eats them? Well, salamanders, snakes. I bet a raccoon likes a good, a good slug from time to time. So by having all these spots and by having all these earth-like earth colors, they're kind of disappearing in the, in, in the environment. It's called camouflage. And they, they are harder to see, harder to spot. And oh, I found something really cool. I'm going to add a title um, of, the, uh, of the slug. And while I add my title, I'm going to tell you something really cool that slugs can do. They use that slime uh, to create ropes. So if they, if imagine, so imagine that there's a rock here and the slug is here. And she wants to go here. That's where her friend is. It's like, come on, hey, come here. And no, I can't, it's too high. Well, use your slime. Oh, okay. So they can create a rope of slime and they can go down. Hello. That was a great idea. Thank you. So if they create their own rope. So that's where she was before. And that's when she went down that huge rock. And now she meets with her friend and then they can spend the day together. So they use that slime to create ropes. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to color my little slug here. Because I thought, how are they going to do that? It's like they create their own, um, yeah, their own um, ladder, really. Uh, slug. I was going to write slime, but no, it's a slug. And we're doing very good with time. We're doing super, super. That's a slug, and mine in particular is called the Pacific Banana Slug. And it has a very funny name in Latin, the scientific name, I'm going to put it here, is Ariolimax, Ariolimax co Lumbianus. That's the scientific name. It sounds like British Columbia, doesn't it? And and this one in particular can be uh, between eighteen point five and twenty six centimeters. And to have an idea on how long that is, I have a ruler. So uh, twenty six centimeters is like this. So actually, it could be perfectly a life size, the one that I drew. Not the little ones I invited, but this one could be very, very big. And as we said, it has um, a head, it has the mantle and the foot. Just one long foot. Uh, I'm going to add some color into my title. And also, before I forget, this is, this is how they use slime. They make a rope and they can go down um, a very high place. I'm going to use this green for all the title. And I, I, I read also something very interesting because do you know that bears, when winter comes, they have been eating and eating all the fish that they could get and they go in hibernation, right? 
Well, something very similar happens to slugs. They go to something, um, uh, bears go to hibernation. So they, that means that they go and they sleep all throughout winter and then they wake up when it's nice, when it's uh, spring. But what slugs do is something very similar and that's called estivation. And it's also going to sleep. So at the end, they both sleep. And, but instead of doing it during winter is when it becomes very, very dry and very hot outside. So when it becomes very, very, very warm, the slug just goes underneath the soil, shortens her legs, and yeah, just falls asleep until, until the weather becomes a little bit cooler and a little bit colder and more humid, which is very cool. I didn't know that. This is our slime. So all the things that are super, super cool uh, about, about, hmm, oh yes, guess what? The slug is the slowest animal on earth. So if you think that there is a slowest animal, mm -mm. I thought the slowest animal was the sloth. And it just so happens that it's the slug. So, so if you imagine that this slug has a, a food delivery company and you order something from her, your food is going to be very cold by the time it comes. So I don't think that's a business I would get into if I was a slug. Because they're very slow. Very, very slow. <laughs> And I found that very interesting. Oh, and you want to know something super cool? I don't want to forget about this. Um, we said that it eats uh, mushrooms, eats leaves and poop from other animals and transforms it into soil. But guess what? It also eats berries. And you're going to be like, oh no, poor berries. If it eats the berry, how is the plant going to grow, right? Well, when it eats berries, all those seeds, she does not digest those. The, 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 all the berry seeds are going to be, uh, she's going to excrete those, which means that she's going to poop them. So all those berries are now covering slime. And guess what? That protects the seed. So actually they help berries because no mouse is going to eat those seeds now that it's all covered in slime and and slug poop so they actually they're so beneficial for for berries and i found that super super interesting so i'm just gonna put that that here so wow slugs eh? How, what, a, what an interesting animal they do so many things they recycle so i don't know you you uh, uh, this this is i if i see a slug um next time i'm gonna Thank her. Thank you for, for thank you for being such a good recycler. And all this line here. So now it's 1150. And I think it's time to name our amazing slug. So if anyone has any uh, suggestion on how we can name our slug, I know my friends Doris and Boris were here. So those are taken, there they are, Boris and Doris. But if you have another name for the slug that we drew today, you can let me know in the chat and we are gonna write that down. So I'm just gonna, in preparation for that, I'm gonna make a little bubble so she can tell us what her name is. And she says, hello, my name is drum roll let's see whoever puts it on the chat first that's the name we're gonna go for dun, 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 dun. suspense 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 bob <laughs> that's a very good one thank you actually yeah like slugs are uh, and snails are hermaphrodites, so they can be uh they are both they're both uh female and male 
So absolutely, a slug, our slug can be Bob. Thank you for the suggestion. That's super cool. So wow, we learned so many things about our slugs. And we are so grateful um, that you join us today on a Saturday to draw together.